And thank you for the kind introduction. I appreciate it. M most of all, I want everybody to know that, is that I'm a teacher and educator, and that's what I care most about is education. And, uh, and so that's why I'm here. And uh, what I'm really going to talk about is really kind of building off the past two uh, presentations is, is about religious literacy. Um, and, and, and so the questions that I want to answer in the, in the short five to six minutes that I have are, are um, you know, why does religious literacy matter? And, and what are some of the barriers to religious literacy education? And how can we teach uh, for religious literacy effectively in education? And so that's what I'm going to look at. So the first thing I want to mention here, and I've been kind of building on this in the past couple of years uh, with the Religious Freedom Institute, is really if, if students have a deeper appreciation of faith traditions, they start to have a deeper appreciation of religious freedom. And I've seen that a lot. I've seen that in some of the conversations that I've had with teachers who talk about religious literacy and we talk to them about religious freedom and they really see those connections as well. So, so definitely when moving forward uh, with religious freedom, I think religious literacy in our schools is a key to that. Um, so some of the questions would be is, you know, well, what's the problem with religious literacy in public schools? Well. First off, let, let's be honest about it. The, the wall between uh, church and state, uh, you know, from the First Amendment, teachers have a misperceived understanding of the First Amendment in public schools. And a lot of times teachers are afraid to work with religion in public schools for fear of controversy, for fear of stepping on First Amendment rights. They're very concerned about that. So, so there, there's a lot of anxiety associated with religious literacy in the classroom. But I think teachers should remember that, I mean, we can teach uh, religion constitutionally if educators are teaching about religion, not for religion. And that's important to, to note. And some of the, the guidelines you could say to, for this, of teaching about religion and not for religion, or um, this comes from the First Amendment Center's guidebook on, on religion and public education called uh, Finding Common Ground are, um, first of all, a teacher should be academic and not devotional. They should teach for awareness and not acceptance. They should study about religion, not practicing a religion. Um, they should try to have students understand the, the diversity of religious views and not impose a particular view and they should not promote or denigrate religions. And finally, um, they should really be about informing about beliefs, but not seeking to make people believe. And if teachers follow these simple guidelines, they will, will be able to successfully teach about religion in the classroom. So there are some good reasons to teach about religion in the classroom. And I'll just go over them very uh, quickly because again, we, I have a few minutes here. Um, there's the constitutional argument which says that schools should remain neutral, meaning religiously neutral, neutral among religions and neutral between religion and non-religious. And so there's that good argument for talking about religion in the classroom. There's also a civic argument, which talks about, you know, schools must have, have a common ground. We, meet, we need to be able to speak and, and respect each other, uh, even on deeply held uh, understandings. And then finally, the last argument would be the liberal education argument, which is if you have a, a strong liberal arts education, it requires that you to be liberally educated. So you can hear about a lot of different uh, backgrounds, opinions, and perspectives. But I'll add one to that, which is called global competence. Um, <clears throat> if you have heard of global competence, global competence is really this capacity to examine local global and intercultural issues and to understand and appreciate those issues and the perspectives of others and worldviews of others and to engage in like open, appropriate and effective interactions with people from different cultures. And so global competence is gaining a lot of traction in education today because it, it covers a lot. Um, it allows students to investigate the world, they recognize uh, their perspectives and other people's perspectives they're able to communicate their ideas effectively with diverse audiences. And more, most importantly, they take action. And so definitely, you know, looking at uh, religious literacy, 
you can see where um, religious literacy really falls into this idea of global competence. Because in, in today's world, our students need to know about these other religious traditions because it's important. They're going to be engaging with people from a variety of religious traditions on a daily basis. And so that's important. Um, so how do you teach about uh, religion in the classroom? And I'm, I'm going to be very brief here too. There is a six point framework uh, about how to teach about religion in the classroom. It's really based on this idea that uh, of internal diversity, dynamic and changing, embedded religions, uh, beliefs, behaviors, and belonging. And I'll go over them very quickly. I feel very rushed here, but uh, that's okay. Um, the, the first three points that I'm going to mention from these guidelines uh, really come from, I think most of you are familiar with them, um, and, the, and the points four through six really come from the Religious Freedom Center. So the first point, which really needs to be brought out when you're teaching in the classroom, is that religions are internally diverse. You know, understanding that uh, all Hinduism is not the same. All Islam is not the same. There is internal diversity within all religious traditions. And having our students understand that is important. Next, to understand that religions are dynamic. They're not static and fixed. We, religions change over time and the religions from in the past are very different to the present. And so that they need to understand that. Third, the religions are embedded in culture. They're not isolated from them. They give to the cultures that they're in. They also take from the cultures that they're in as well. It's a give and take. And so a, a, a religious tradition is embedded within this culture. And then finally, uh, beliefs, behaviors, and belonging. Everybody who has uh, a religious background and a faith tradition has certain beliefs from theology to values and ethics. They have behaviors from holy rites and rituals to habits and practices. And they, they have a belonging from a large transnational churches and institutions to local and informal groups. And so, being able to understand religious traditions in this sense, using this six point framework is very helpful for teachers. And if they use this six point framework, they really can develop sound lessons to study religion. And what I would like to call a lived religion, because typically, um, and I taught this way years ago when I was first started teaching world history in the past, I would teach about uh, you know, a religion in the past, Islam in the past. And it was very static. And so what we need to teach uh, our, our children today and students today is about lived religion. And lived religion is how uh, people, human beings encounter religion, understand religion and interpret and practice religion in their daily lives. And so one way that I do this in the classroom is through this graphic organizer. It's, it's just a simple graphic organizer, which has your six point framework on it. And then we take a graphic novel, it's like Miss Marvel, which features a Muslim girl from New Jersey who has superpowers and, uh, and, and see how her religion uh, manifests itself in her life through the graphic organizer. It really brings the, the, uh, the religions alive, the religious traditions alive for the students. So they understand it in a more lived way rather than a static historical way. Um, and back to my last argument, which is if you teach about lived religions, you teach about religious literacy in this way, you really add to student global competence. And if you're adding to student global competence in the classroom, you're definitely going to add to a better world. And so um, I, I have a website called religion-matters.com where I publish out a blog and I, I, I produce lesson plans, of course, and provide the guidelines, a lot of graphic organizers, a lot of stuff about uh, religious traditions and teaching it in the K-12 classroom because it's a very important project for me. And I think it's uh, worthwhile to, to move forward with it. Thank you.